Hello guys, in the last video, we saw what an inrush current is, how dangerous it can be, and how an active inrush current limit circuit can be useful. Today, we'll see how to design it using ourselves using MOSFETs. If you ever felt stuck between your circuit ideas and an actual working PCB, then let me introduce our partner of today's video, which is RTM. RTM Designer is a complete PCB design tool where we capture schematic, design PCB layout, run simulations, and create manufacturing ready electronic circuit all in one software. It starts with schematic capture where we transform our paper circuit to a proper design, which is ready for simulation and layout. Then we can run SPICE simulations to test our design, to check the performance and catch any mistakes before they cost us time and money. And after that, we can directly optimize component placement on PCB and design layout with advanced routing tools. It even helps with wiring harness design, where we can plan, design, and document our wiring harness, which connect PCBs with each other. And now it gets even better with Altium 365, which connects our design to our teams, manufacturer, and even component suppliers to cloud. With this, our team can review, comment, and collaborate on the projects from anywhere in the world. Very important feature is its bomb portal. It keeps our component sourcing organized, where we can track component availability, compare suppliers, and check if we got the right parts before placing an order. So remember, Ultium Designer is where we design our electronics, and Ultium 365 is how we connect with the team to build the project into reality. And the best part is, you can try Ultium Designer for free, and when you buy the license, you get 25% discount. You just have to click the link pasted below in the description. So, now on the video. Let's start with a simple effective method, a PHRN MOSFET based inrush current limiting circuit. It is commonly used for power management in portable electronics and embedded systems. This is the circuit. V in is our input power supply. This could be from a battery or a power rail. The P-channel MOSFET is used to control the voltage coming from the input to the load. On the right side of the circuit, we have actual load. It is shown as a resistor and a capacitor, which represents our downstream circuit. Now, here's where the magic happens. We want to turn this series MOSFET on and off in a controlled way. So, we use a small internal MOSFET at the bottom called Q1 and we control it using a digital signal labeled Enable. When the signal is low, Q1 turns off and the gate of the P channel MOSFET is pulled up through resistor R2 to V in. That means the gate and source are at the same voltage and the MOSFET stays off. But when the Enable is pulled high, Q1 turns on. This pulls the gate of the P-channel MOSFET down through the resistor R1 and this negative gate to source voltage turns the MOSFET on, allowing full power to flow into the output. Well, that's basic. But capacitor C1 here is the real impact player. This capacitor slows down the gate voltage transition and this controls the sleeve rate and limits the inrush current. R1 and R2 form a resistor network to safely control gate voltage levels. This load can be highly capacitive. To turn on a P-channel MOSFET, VSD should be high enough. Here the source of the MOSFET is connected to the VN. So we must pull the gate of the MOSFET to low to turn it on. The gate must be at least one threshold voltage above VN to turn it on. This threshold voltage depends on the MOSFET parameter. Also, we should avoid exceeding VSG max, which we will consider as 8 volts as an example. This will vary as per the MOSFET parameters again. 
we will use R1 and R2 to ensure the gate voltage is within the safe limits. As we are adding a series switch in the circuit, so we must take care of the efficiency by calculating the power loss. The main loss is due to the MOSFET on resistance. For example, if we use PMOS with RDS on of 50 milliohms and N channel MOSFET with RDS on of 30 milliohms instead of this PMOS. Then for a 10 ampere load current, a PMOS with 50 milliohm resistance will dissipate 5 watts of power. That's a lot. In comparison, an N channel MOSFET with only 30 milliohms RDS on will dissipate just 3 watts. Then we can simply use an N channel MOSFET here, right? Well, that's where the limitation comes in. The N channel MOSFETs need an extra gate driver or charge pump circuitry to work on the high side, which adds complexity and money. At low currents, PMOS is fine and simpler. So it is widely used. When a capacitive load is suddenly connected to main, it behaves like a shot during startup, asking for a very large current. If uncontrolled, this can drop wane sharply, damage connectors and power rails, and reduce component life. This inrush current can be calculated like this. So, faster turn on leads to higher inrush. This can be limited by slowing down the gate voltage ramp of the P-channel MOSFET. For that, C1 needs to slow down the gate transition between gate and source. R1 and R2 need to control the gate discharge current and voltage divider. And Q1 should turn on or off based on the logic enable signal. Let's take a look at the example circuit and see how this works. We slow down the turn on speed by slowing down how fast the gate voltage drops. That's why we add this capacitor C1 between the gate and source of the MOSFET. Together with resistor R1, it creates a time delay, an RC time constant. That slows the voltage ramp. This keeps the MOSFET turning on gently, which limits the inrush current. This part is called as a soft start. Let's walk through a design example. First is the input voltage, which is around 10 volts. The maximum load current or I load max is 5 amperes. The maximum allowable inrush current is 3 amperes. The load capacitance is 1 microfarad. The maximum gate to source voltage is 8 volts. The threshold voltage of the P channel MOSFET is minus 0.67 volts. And the transconductance of the selected MOSFET is 5.9 siemens. First, we pick R2 as 1K. That's our standard pull up resistor. Now we calculate R1 using this formula. That gives us R1 is equal to 250 ohms. Next, we calculate capacitor C1. We can use this formula for that. Where VPL is the plateau voltage of the MOSFET, calculated like this. And from that, we get C1 as 10.8 nanofarad. This combination limits the ingress current up to 3 amperes while safely turning on the MOSFET. We can play with this maximum ingress current by changing this RC time constant by changing R1 and C1. And this is exactly how we can design an efficient controlled P channel load switch with inrush current protection. Let's look at a very clever circuit in many types of DC to DC converters or any load to handle inrush current using an N channel MOSFET, few resistors, and a capacitor. Here, we don't need a complex gate driver mechanism for NMOS because it will be used in the return path. So it will be used as a low side switch. And this is how the circuit would look like. Let's see the working. Initially, this capacitor C1 is fully discharged. That means the gate of the MOSFET Q1 is held low. 
So Q1 is off. When the power is first applied, the load current flows to the resistor RL, which acts as a current limiter during this initial startup phase. So the load charges up slowly, and this effectively limits the ingress current. Meanwhile, C1 is slowly charging through resistor R1. At C1 charges, the gate voltage of the MOSFET increases. Eventually, it reaches a voltage high enough to turn on Q1, allowing current to bypass RL, so the NMOS will have lowest resistance path for the load current, effectively shorting it out once inrush is over. The voltage that turns on Q1 is determined by the voltage divider formed by R1 and R2. The gate voltage of this MOSFET is approximately like this. Now, let's talk about the timing. If C1 is small, the timing depends heavily on the gate capacitance of the MOSFET, which is called CG. The total timing delay can be estimated using this formula. The MOSFET Q1 we choose must be able to handle the worst case input current, especially at the minimum input voltage. It also needs a threshold voltage low enough so that the gate can be fully turned on when the VIN is at its lowest specification. So, we always have to check the VGS threshold and make sure our resistor values give us enough gate voltage. The resistor RL sets how much the inrush current is limiting during the startup. We want it to be large enough to reduce the surge, but small enough to let the load start up properly. Well, that's it for today's deep dive into inrush current and how to conquer it using MOSFET based limiting circuits. If you learn something new from this, don't forget to check the description for references. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button as well and stay tuned for more exciting content.